بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين In the name of Allah, most merciful, most compassionate, all praise be to Allah, peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad and all the Prophets from Adam to him, peace be upon them all. This will be the third session on our spiritual journey with the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. Both the Qur'an and the month of fasting serve for Muslims as most essential sources of morality and spirituality. Already we spoke about the role of the Qur'an for the life of the Muslims, in particular for the believers. Allah Almighty has described to us the Qur'an in Surah Yunus, verse number 57, as a counsel from our Lord, as a good advice, and also a kind of cure and healing for the diseases in our hearts, in particular for any kind of doubt, hypocrisy, or other sorts of evil thoughts is a cure to like clear these things from our heart. And also it's a book of guidance from Allah Almighty and mercy, in particular for all the believers. So four dimensions of the Quran have been mentioned in this particular verse with reference to the believers. A good advice, a good lesson, a shifa, a cure, physical and spiritual, and also hidayah, guidance and mercy. They have been bestowed by Allah Almighty these four elements on the believers not only as blessings, but also source of joy and pleasure. Since we are in the month of Ramadan, we need to take the Quran in the spirit of this month to get more inspiration from the Quran. Both fasting, the month of fasting Ramadan, and the Quran are very powerful, if I use this term, catalyst or medium or transformative power for the Muslims. They are the means for improving and beautifying our human character. And both the Quran and the fasting teach us how to discipline ourselves. And of course, morality, then the, the peak of the morality is consciousness of Allah Almighty, gaining taqwa. Quran is so essential uh, for our life and it, has, it is to be taken as what I may call companion, a close intimate companion for, all, for us, like a living, living reality facing us, speaking us directly. Therefore, in Surah Furqan, uh, verse number 30, Allah Azza wa Jal says, in, of course, in the language of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace upon him, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اِتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا This is very uh, articulate, very explicit, and kind of also warning for us as Muslims today. And in reference to the time of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the Prophet is saying, uh, the Messenger of Allah will say, O oh my Lord, uh, my people somehow abandoned the Quran or forsook the Quran and deserted the Quran. Meaning, in explanation, they seem to be paid little attention to the spirit and the meaning of the Qur'an, neither listened to it nor acted on it is principles, teachings. So, Qur'an is not reading per se. 
reading in the sense of like without understanding. As uh, we uh, frequently mentioned, even the reading without understanding is an act of worship in the sight of Allah, no doubt about it. But Quran is uh, for us a, a, a character training and moral, moral teacher, for, so to speak. Today, uh, in this session, in the context of the Quran, since we are in the month of Ramadan, I would like to uh, speak about the significance of zakat, a social duty of Muslims. Of course, let Quran speak for us how, why this uh, duty, or as they say in English, legal arms, poor, charity or poor tax, if you use this expression, is so important for the Muslims, as Quran describes to us. First, uh, wealth in the Quran is described as a bounty of Allah, like Fadul, Fadullah in a sense, in, for example, in Surah Al-Jumma, for example, and also kind of good, a blessing, a ni'mah of Allah. Quran is not against earning wealth at all. And, but this wealth, like other bounties of Allah, is a trust. And as such, the possessor of the wealth can spend and dispose it as he wishes, but in accordance with the guidelines of Allah Almighty in the Quran. So Quran uh, generally speaking, stipulates at least two essential rules, among others, concerning the use of the wealth. First, not all the wealth that we have earned is ours. The needy and destitute has a right in our wealth. This is very important. That's exactly as we will elaborate uh, shortly in the Quran. So, the wealth we have earned doesn't belong to us as a whole. There is a portion of it which belongs to needy and destitute and, uh, people. The so Quran specified is this as a right in that wealth. The second stipulation, second condition, and, and uh, Quran speaks about that we can spend it for rightful legitimate purpose and uses. So we, can, we cannot waste our money. So we have no, uh, like, we can spend anywhere we like, provided that it is legitimate and it has a purpose and meaning. Uh, so these two principles are very important. Uh, and these two are also correlated. And, and the, uh, uh, so according to the, teaching of the Quran, we can earn whatever, uh, as much as we can, and the, depending, of course, our available means, through legitimate means, halal means, and we can also spend it the way as we want it, provided that for a, a good use, and also it has a portion in it that doesn't belong to us, belong to uh, our fellow brothers and sisters who are in need. So another important principle maybe in this context that the Quran categorically prohibits hoarding wealth and exploiting the less fortunate poor people in the society. This is also a very important principle that we keep in mind. So zakat therefore has been imposed by Allah Almighty, by our Creator, in order to uh, share with the less fortunate people in the society. And the zakat has been imposed in order not to tolerate any injustices and malpractices as far as the world is, is concerned. So, we can spend it, for, for example, for the living of our conditions, for the living of our family, also in the way of Allah, as Quran says. And now, remember the first principle we said, that 
poor and needy has a right in our wealth. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, this is Surah Tawbah, in, in a, maybe I can speak about uh, in, in parentheses here, in most of the important aspects of the zakat uh, are detailed in this Surah Tawbah. Tawbah means repentance in the, in the Surah 9. And, and let me read first this verse. خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَحِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّهِمْ بِهَا وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِكَ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيُّنْ عَلِيمٌ O Muhammad, peace be upon him, this is an order by Allah to the Prophet, of course to him, in his personality, the message has been addressed directly to his ummah. Take from their wealth is an order. Take from their wealth a charity by which you can purify them. And this is very important. And also help them increase their wealth, purify themselves, purify their wealth, and also help them increase, cause them increase uh, their wealth to Zekihim. The both meaning and also pray for them invoke blessings of Allah upon them and and in the salat second because your prayer your invocations is a kind of reassurance for them like a tranquility comfort for them after all uh, Allah is semiyon alim all hearing all knowing so, taking alms of the property from the wealthy people is an order, as the Quran specified it. And it will help us clean our service, also clean our wealth, purify our service, also increase our wealth by giving. And, and the Prophet, therefore, will pray for us and for them, and surely, a prophet's prayer is a relief, is a kind of comfort to them. So let me in here uh, offer you what we understand from the zakat, legal arms, in the context of the Quran. It is a criterion of Islam. It is, in a sense, scale of Islam, a proof, an indication for the truthfulness of our faith, not only by tongue, but also by your social uh, activities. You can confirm that you believe in Allah Almighty. After all, you are sharing his niyama, his blessings, although you earn it with the people who are in need. So it's a confirmation of our Muslim identity. So it was through zakat, among other institutions, very important, uh, that a healthy, a sound, a strong society can be established according to the Quran. So much so that in such a well-established society, individuals fulfill their duties, responsibilities, one another uh, carefully and better, and also develop their moral character. So, every ritual of, of uh, Islam, the pillars, each one has minimum two, two aspects. One individual, one social. One physical, one spiritual. Like in the case of zakat, the social aspect it has, of course, kind of creating balance, equilibrium, and the order harmony in the society by giving your you know, and, and the uh, wealth, sharing it. And this is a physical, economic aspect. Of it. Spiritual aspect, it will help us also to clean ourselves from like stinginess, from you know, arrogance, selfishness, conceit. So all this kind of evil character will be dispelled, will be eliminated uh, from us by acting on the duty, 
that Allah Almighty asks us to do, like giving actively your zakat. So uh, it will help us to develop our spiritual strength and moral character. So a moral society, even a moral just society, is one of the purposes of the Quran. Therefore, ethical and moral society established on the principles of justice and fairness. So do this effect, zakat plays a very, very crucial role. It is only through zakat and charity the, uh, that economic and social injustices, inequalities or disparities can be improved. And also through zakat, the bond of, you know, uh, uh, brotherhood, sisterhood, or, or, or the relationship can be strengthened. And, and therefore the Quran says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءِ بَعْضِ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيُقِيمُنَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُنَ الزَّكَاءِ وَيُطِيعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَئِكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ This is uh, Surah Tawbah again, 71, chapter 9, 71. Look how important uh, and how uh, Allah Almighty is providing for us the characteristics of a believing society and the believers that they established. He says, believers are, uh, you know, men and women in a sense, are like companions, protectors of one another. Meaning they like uh, get together in solidarity, in unity, in like bond. So now Quran says, how is it, how this can be achieved? And the following uh, 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 part of this uh, ayah gives us how you can achieve such uh, solidarity and unity and harmony and strength in the society by Muslim brothers and sisters together. It says, يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ So that uh, uh, they continue to order what is ma'roof, what is good, what is just, and join. And prevent what is wrong, what is evil, what is unacceptable, unethical. Then they all observe what? Prayer. Because they individually and collectively uh, um, are God conscious, consciousness of Allah through their prayers. And then to a zakah, they keep on giving their uh, charity, zakat. Regular charity, if you know, it is not a voluntary, but a regular charity. And you tune Allah, then they continue to obey Allah and His Messenger. And it is on these people, Allah Almighty, pour His mercy. And for Allah, He is Aziz and Hakim, exalted in power and all wise. See, in order to achieve harmony, solidarity in the society, these principles need to be and must be observed. Uh, that, that, that is extremely important. Then, if you, if you do not fulfill these duties, I'm afraid we may fall into another category, kind of hypocrisy. What? We just say by our tongues, but we do not act on what we believe. This is a sign of ostentation, riya. Okay? And, and this may cause our decadence, corruption. This may really bring us to a disastrous, harmful uh, uh, condition as a society and Allah Almighty also gives this and, and, and like as opposed to these uh, um, believers and strength and solidarity and there are also this group المنافقون والمنافقات بعضهم من بعض يأمرون بالمنكر وينهون عن المعروف ويقبضون أيديهم نسوا الله فنسيهم this is a terrible situation. 
you know, if the, the, the end result or the uh, failure in fulfilling the requirements of the verse that I have previously uh, recited, and the order in the goodness, preventing the evil, continuously uh, observing the prayer by being God conscious, giving your regular charity, and, and these will enable us uh, to uh, keep our society together and connected and peaceful and healthy, strong. In, in solidar solidar solidarity. If we do not do this, that is the result. And the Quran says the major causes of decadence of societies is the negligence of the payment of zakat by their prosperous wealthy members. And this ayah says the hypocrites, men and women, and you know, they have an understanding with each other. They like uh, also look after each other in different way. And they enjoin instead of good, evil. And they forbid uh, uh, what is just. And also they are close with their hands like stingy. They don't pay their regular charity. And they have, because of that, and they, don't, they do not pray. They have forgotten Allah Almighty. And Allah also in turn has forgotten them. Verily, these focus are rebellious. And they are perver perverse. And this is a really, may Allah forbid, the, uh, the failure on our part uh, in fulfilling as a believer our duty, in particular prayer and the charity. So therefore, Quran, for a healthy society, always uh, put emphasis, this intertwined, inseparable, you know, rituals. One is prayer, like this together. Right after the prayer comes then the regular charity. So, If you do not fulfill your deity, because you are, you are like negligent, you are careless, you have no regard to less fortunate people, destitute or needy, you are just sitting on your ego and ambitious and greedy. So the, uh, and it will also not help us to uh, improve our human character if you continue to um, behave uh, uh, indifferently to our religious teachings. So in this ayah it says, uh, do not be like those who forget about Allah and he will make them forget themselves. They are of course, fasting and wicked and sinful people. Now, let me be more specific about zakat. Zakat is so important, maybe as compared to many other prayers or, or rituals, such as prayer, fasting, and hajj. You know, they they are. Uh, relatively speaking, uh, less detailed as compared to uh, zakat. Zakat in the Quran, because of its vital significance for a healthy society, and it gives us the full details, who will receive and who will give, how you will give, Okay, and and uh, and the uh, giving. What what are the benefits of giving? What are the uh, consequences of withholding, not giving? Okay, so therefore, uh, as compared to other rituals, zakat s uh, somehow sits in the center of social justice system. That, so that's why it's it's very important for Muslims to fulfill this duty diligently and, uh, and, and of course with wholeheartedly. إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَمْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ This is Quran. Uh, we, we, we already mentioned our wealth, our children are a blessing of Allah, but at the same time a trial for us. You know, trial. They may keep us away from our duties. You know, we, we get so much, for example, 
occupy ourselves with our wealth and forget our duties to the human being and being also forgetful of Allah Almighty ourselves and we may turn out to be like arrogant and rebellious you know, you know. so like uh, uh, maybe we can we can say uh, like uh, in we cannot maybe control ourselves sometimes so yes our wealth and our children uh, are a blessing of Allah but also a trial for us and Quran and it says very clearly uh, and uh, your wealth, your children are but a trial, already we said, uh, Allah has with him a great reward for those who take care of these things carefully. And here there is a warning, be careful of your duty to Allah as much as you can. In what? Hear and obey and spend it. And hear and obey and spend it. It is better for yourselves if you do that. And here is the maybe very crucial part of this verse. Whoever is saved from the greediness of his own carnal soul, his ego or selfishness, and that person will be successful in you know in, in his life so uh, zakat is is a test for us and is a means that we can overcome our greediness we can defeat our greediness so keep your duty to allah fear him as much as you can listen and and they also obey him and spend in charity that is better for yourselves Whoever is protected, saved from covetousness, greediness, ambitions, they are the one who will succeed. This is, of course, Surah Taabun and uh, 64, 15, 16. In the Quran, every moral and spiritual duty, every religious act Allah Almighty has commanded us has multiple purpose and benefits and, and the, you can list this is what we call the wisdom behind our you know uh, uh, religious values and and the principles and rituals uh, let us see uh, what is the role of zakat we already mentioned it will help us to improve our moral character individual and it will also generate love respect this is very important one another and the, and the third as far as the society is concerned people will not have a bad eye or evil eye or envy in your wealth that's also important because what you are sharing with them and after all it was the duty of the prophet every prophet including the prophet muhammad وسلم, as we mentioned earlier before that they came to teach clearly what allah almighty has commanded them to convey and one of their teaching was to the book and also purify the society and teach them how to practice the, the, the uh, uh, you, uh, revelations, revelation and, and the uh, teachings of, of the Quran and the scripture uh, by performing themselves, meaning hikmah. And in, the, in this sense, every pillar of Islam as taught, as practiced by the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, has physical, individual, social, moral and spiritual benefits for us. So, zakat, as we learn from the Quran, is one of the most effective means for gaining control over our uh, ambitions, selfishness, covetousness, egoistic attitudes and behaviors. Therefore, the verses 
uh, that we have already recited, uh, use the expression teskiye, clean your wealth and yourself. By cleaning it also increase your wealth. And the, uh, so zakat has two sides. One, as we mentioned, the one who is giving, it will help him improve or her improve his or her moral character, being a good uh, believer, pious, and, and also uh, beautifying his, her character, and being a charitable, generous, uh, considerate, also the uh, receiver, receiver who? The society. So the uh, other side will have respect for you, develop and grow, grow love for you, and pray for you, but also uh, the society will have a balanced a kind of healthy, just, uh, and the happy society. So zakat, uh, in, in this sense, it is an individual and collective uh, implication and benefits. Uh, therefore, Quran uses uh, the expression that he assures that you will achieve peace and prosperity, falah. If you, if you fulfill your, this, this duty. If you fail to do so, and as Quran wars, you will face serious consequences, not only in this world, but in the hereafter too. And possessions and wealth, literal and metaphorical, according to Quran, as we mentioned, do not belong to us. So they have been given by Allah as blessing, as a test. So Allah Almighty made us instrumental to work for it and earn it. Being an earner does not give the entitlement for you to dispose it the way you like it. And this is uh, the warning of the, of the Quran. And uh, uh, we learn from the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Hassinu amwalakum bi zakat Protect your wealth by giving your zakat. And, and, and continues, and where Dawu Mardakum Bisadaka, very interesting. Also, cure your patience by giving charity. Westakbiru Amwajal Bala Biduai Watadaro. Look at this now. Also, try to face and, and the overcome, uh, handle the waves of calamities by making special supplication, beseeching Allah Almighty, and displaying your needs to Allah Almighty, and making your dua, and this is an hadith. So we can, cannot count individual benefits of zakat, but one of the things which really strikes me most is altruism, if you use this English expression. You prefer the love of Allah to the love of your wealth. And also you prefer the goodness, the well-being of your brother and sister over your well-being. So success, like a prosperity uh, or, and the happiness can come or come about if you prefer the love of Allah to that of your wealth. Meaning you give away from what you love most <laughs> for the sake of whom you love most. And this is important. So, uh, and and the, uh, freeing one's, oneself from the bad habits of stinginess and showing the gratitude to Allah for his blessings, or oh, like humility we are learning, and humbleness, modesty, and, and considerate, being a considerate to, to the others, these are all important dimensions and benefits of, of the zakat. zakat. And the, another important, and because the spiritual uh, part of it, you, the more you give to the servants of Allah, the closer you will be the creator of the servants, your Lord. And you will attain, really, His love. You will deserve His love in the end. So the payment of zakat, in particular in the month of Rahmah, 
in this month has many full spiritual benefits. So fasting and the Quran and charity all together and fortify your character and build a strong personality if you really fulfill the requirements of each one of them and in this particular month. Therefore, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was the most generous among people, but he will even become far greater generous than, than ever before in the month of Ramadan as we learn from, the, from his teachings. So, and now maybe another important dimension. Uh, in addition to zakat, there is also voluntary charity, like chari giving charity. You can give whatever you have. Somebody gives in charity something equal to a date, as Rasul says, from his honestly earned money to Allah, nothing except what is good and pure, a sense. So even the, you know, as small as a date, when it, you know, in the time of need, if you give and you will really uh, get the pleasure of Allah Almighty in this. So, the sole motive, maybe this will be uh, uh, my last, but then not the least, uh, point in the context of zakat. The sole motive in giving charity and also regular charity is supposed to be for just for winning the pleasure of Allah, nothing else. No thanks are expected all, at all from recipients of zakat or charity or from the beneficiaries of our good deeds. Even it will be much better if the giver expresses his or her gratitude to the receiver. I thank you for accepting my gift. And the reward is expected from Allah Almighty. And by the way, we do our duty, of course, for the pleasures of, of paradise. But the highest is we do it for his own sake, for the pleasure of Allah. Because paradise pleasures will come eventually if he loves us. So the true characteristics of a true believer in the, in the Quran, as we, as we learn, إِنَّمَا نُدْعِمُكُمْ لِبَجِ La nuridu minkum jaza'an wala shukura. This is in Surah Al-Dahr al insan 76, verse number 9. Indeed, when they give the charity, when they feed somebody, we feed you for the pleasure of Allah. We wish no reward, no thanks whatsoever from you. So is the cat is so essential duty for our Muslims. Let, let me conclude that all the details as to why it is given, for whom it is given, how it is given are said in the Quran. Then in this month of Ramadan, let us try to fulfill this noble duty as a believer, as a citizen. And so that uh, Allah Almighty uh, will uh, bestow his mercy and love on those who give and those who receive. And eventually, there will be a very healthy, peaceful, and happy society. Of course, the ultimate uh, uh, pleasure and the reward will be in the hereafter. And Allah Almighty accept the pray our prayers, fastings, and charities and all good deeds. May Allah Almighty uh, forgive us in this uh, middle of the month of Ramadan, the 10 days in month, uh, days of forgiveness. And we ask his forgiveness, O oh Allah, forgive us. You are forgiver, you love to forgive, forgive us. May Allah's peace and blessings and mercy and love be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum.